Hi everyone, this is Asma Mushtaq from the Double E Vibes, and in this lecture, I'll explain the uh, sequential circuit analysis. Uh, by uh, what is meant by the sequential circuit analysis? It means uh, we want to determine uh, what kind of the output uh, the uh, the sequential circuit will generate, or how the sequential circuit actually works for the given input, and then for the dis, uh, for the output. Uh, we can see clearly here are two flip-flops that are basically the D flip-flops have been used for the design of the, se uh, the sequential circuits where there is a certain part that is actually the combinational part and it is design of the logical gates. Only one input is present and corresponding to that only one output Y is present fine and two flip-flops are here so right now x is the input y is the output and two d type flip flops are used by the analysis of the sequential circuits we need to actually determine the state equations From the state equation, I will construct the state table and if there is any possibility of the reduction of the states, I will do that. Otherwise, if there is no chance of reducing the state, then I will move to the next step that is the drawing the state diagram from the state table. Okay. Now let's see step by step what is meant by the state equation, state table and then the state diagram. The state equations are actually the equations that relate the input, output and the front states or the next state of the flip-flop. Alright. For determining the state equations, we actually try to write the output function as a function of the inputs since i have used two d type flip flops and we know that whatever the input is present will be forwarded at the output side since it is a transparent latch fine so for determining the value of the output or in other words you can say a of t plus one why i have written a of t plus one because if a of t is the current state of the flip-flop then for the given input x we want to predict the next value of this flip-flop at time instant t plus 1. Here the output of the first flip-flop is marked as a and output of the second flip-flop has been marked as b. Okay. If we know the input of this flip-flop, we can easily predict A of t plus 1 since D, A of t plus 1 is actually equal to B. Fine. A of t plus 1 is actually equal to the D input. The D input is being generated from this combinational part and here two AND gates have been used where the first input of the AND gate is A of T. Second input is X of T. Similarly here you can see X of T is the first input while we are getting B of T as the second input of this AND gate. And finally we are pouring these terms. So A of T plus 1 can be written as a of t into x of t plus b of t into x of t and since t parameter is actually common for all these parameters that's why we can write or simply write it as a into x plus b into x or in other words, 
a of t plus 1 is actually equal to a plus b into x. Now, for determining the output of the second flip-flop, which is marked as b of t plus 1, it is equal to again d and d is generated from the output of this AND gate whose first input is A complement of T and the second input is X of T. Okay, so we can generate the output of B of T plus 1 like X of T into B complement, sorry, A complement of T. Or we can also write it as a complement into x since both are the functions of the parameter t. Now we are left with determining the value of the output function of y. So y of t is generated from here which is actually the or of b of t and a of t. So a of t plus b of t are being ended with the node of x which is simply again written as a plus b into x complement. So these are the equations which are linking the current state of the flip-flop and input to the next state of the flip-flops. So, such type of the equations are referred to as the state equations. And this is the output Boolean function. Once we are done with determining the values of the state equations, the next step is to determine the state table. For m number of flip flops, and n number of inputs, we will have the state table rows equal to 2 raised to power m plus n. Fine. So 2 raised to power 2 plus 1 is equal to 2 raised to power 3 which is equal to 8. Here we will be writing the binary combination for 8 rows or for number of bits equal to 3. The entries that should be present in the state table are the present state since two flip flops are present that's why a and b will be representing their present state value the next variable is input which is x then corresponding to these combinations we will see or we will be predicting the values of the next state of the flip-flops which will be totally dependent on the value of the d or in other words the input fine and finally we will be getting the output boolean function so let's just start writing or constructing the state table since uh, three parameters or three variables are here we will be using the three bit binary combination Okay, so I, I have written the 3-bit binary possible combination where the number of rows are equal to 8 in the state table. The next step is to determine the next state of the flip-flops which is actually the A of T plus 1 and then B of T plus 1 that we had written uh, in the form of the state equations. We see that, we can see that A of T plus 1 is actually the OR of A and B and into x since x is present so this function will generate the output value equal to 1 only when x is equal to 1 and either of a and 
B are equal to 1 as well. So looking at the table, we can say that here we will get 0, here again we will get 0, 0, right here we will have 1, then 0, then 1, then 0 and finally 1. Alright. In this way, we have filled or determined the next step of the flip-flop A. Now, let's determine the output or the next state of the flip-flop B whose value is equal to A complement into X. Alright. So, A complement into X will generate the output value equal to 1 where X is equal to 1 and A is equal to 0. Fine. And by looking at the table, we can simply write the value of B to be equal to 0, then 1, then 0, then 1, and then all values will be equal to 0. Why? Because B of T plus 1 was equal to A complement into X. And for last four values, A complement will generate 0 value. That's why I have written zeros over here. Fine. The last step is to determine the value of this output function. Fine. And it was equal to A plus B into X complement. So wherever X is equal to 1, we will be getting the value of the function equal to 0. And hence the output function would be equal to 0, 0, 1, then 0, then 1, then 0, then 1 and 0. Okay, you must remember that the output function was written for the a of t and b of t not for a of t plus 1 and b of t plus 1 so uh, you must be very much clear, uh, careful about uh, determining the value of the y of t and you are supposed to utilize a of t and b of t fine once you have determined the state table i'll explain in the next video how you can draw the state diagram from it